Hey everybody, welcome to the Pride 4 Podcast. My name is Bryce. Chris. Ross. Alex. And there's not much going on? Yeah. <laughs> That's the episode, people. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> so um, did you guys see the, the ludicrous article that I posted? Uh, I probably read it earlier in the week. What did he say? He was uh, just shouting out his top three favorite songs. Of his? Yeah, of his own. Yeah, that is that is ridiculous. Well, uh, the, the person interviewing him asked him the question because he had all his plaques behind him when they were talking about his new platform or whatever that's going to launch at the end of the summer. And then he's like, what are your three favorite songs of your own? And it's like, he picked two and a half, which isn't bad. Oh, one of them was just a feature? Yeah, one of them was, yeah, with uh, Lil John and Usher and all that shit. And then, oh, yeah, I like that one. Uh, one was Move Bitch, and the other one was um, Southern Hospitality. Jeez. So those would not be my top three. That's what I'm saying. Like That's why I, I posted it, because I'm like, I can see Southern Hospitality because that was like almost how we were introduced to Ludacris. And like that is pretty, pretty essential on your top Luda songs. Like that has to be there. But like, yeah, with Lil John and Usher, like it was a hit. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't put that over a lot of the shit that he did. Hell, I wouldn't even put that over a lot of the skits that were on Word of Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's cra- It's crazy. Like when. Artists have like a complete like uh, well their like list of their own favorite songs is always fucking weird. Yeah. Of like an own artist. It's like I don't like any of my hits. I like the Z sides. That's usually how it is though. Well, yeah, it's like this one means a lot to me. It's personal. It's like that's understandable and stuff. But some of them are like (laughs) <laughs> like ludicrous it's like why why ushers yeah like yeah and it's you got like, good you got better shit it's good but you got better shit right and then it's like he said because when he heard it he knew it would be a hit and i get that but it's just like certain songs for me like back when i was recording like it was like certain songs i identify with more and i liked more because the process of writing and recording them was super fun and that's what I think of every time I hear the track. I don't really, you know, go for lyrics. The first thing I think of is which song did I have the most fun recording? And it's kind of shocking that he he picked those three of all of his body of work. Like, I definitely, I would have picked one out of the three, but I'm not sure about the other two. Yeah. I'm just I'm just waiting for some artist to be, like, asked a question like that. And he's like, well, actually, my favorite song of mine is actually this guy's cover version of my song. Right? That was <laughs> huge. <is>. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have Cameo going there. Actually, it was the corn version of my song, Word Up, that I liked the most. <laughs> God dang it. That would not be my pick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um. So, uh, did you guys see that? Of course you didn't see it. Uh, Snoop Dogg posted a video of Kanye and Dre in the studio working together. Yep. Yeah, that's uh disappointing. I saw a picture I saw a video that Kid Cudi recorded of Kanye playing Sonic. Like just playing video games, nerding out. I'm like, yo, it's not that Kanye was even good at the video game. It's just like wow. It's one of those weird moments where you're like, yeah, rich people do normal shit too. It's it's weird. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I I assume uh, I don't know. Like a lot of usually like rich people don't have time to play video games because they're just socializing and fucking everywhere. Right? It's like one of them weird things where like where if you figure out that Bill Gates is actually like addicted to diet coke. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you like running up on a famous person in a grocery store, you're like Wow, oh my god, I can't believe you eat food. It's like no shit, dumbass. <laughs> yeah. But, you know that's you pretty funny. See them in that particular role and you're like, holy shit, there is other stuff that is amazing. It's like, like it's not really that cool. 
There's like a picture of Bill Gates like waiting in line just to get like a hamburger somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like that's un like I don't think like other billionaires don't do that. But no. he but he did do it. Which is like you're like it's, it's crazy. You're expecting him to like drink cucumber water and shit like that and Yeah, like Oh god. <laughs> Sure. That's Jeff Bezos shit. Probably. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> just that hires 50 fitness trainers that just like work give him work. everything they, and they work move his arms him for him and legs. Right. So he doesn't exactly. actually do it. They exactly. Check the roids for him. <laughs> yep. I saw something with uh Bill Gates one time where he had to guess like the price of like some like household items. Yep. And yep. he had he was like just shit was he was just naming shit so expensive yep like yep. listening it as like triple the price and they're just like have you ever been shopping and he's like i do, i don't do that <laughs> the best part about it is it's like okay so like you think this shit's that expensive but then you see the minimum wage you're like do you just think that like everybody can't afford like a thing of ketchup or something <laughs> yeah i think he was like it's like laundry detergent Standard laundry detergent. He was like twenty nine dollars or something, <laughs> and it's like either the person who does his shopping is just fucking robbing him blind. <laughs> that would be good. Like, fucking, you go to Trader Joe's. That shit is probably that price for no reason. Oh fucking Trader Joe's, Joe Button. Fucking Trader Joe Buttons. Trader Joe's, dude. This <laughs> this is organic laundry detergent, bro. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? You're gonna be eating your Meats. fucking laundry, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm looking for I uh... soda, and I saw that a soda was vegan, and I'm like, how the fuck are sodas not vegan? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I don't understand that shit, dude. They put like, who knows what they do with food, dude? They put like fish bones and Jello. Or some yeah. shit. Or bones. It's like yeah. anything. Could be anything. They're like, yo, let's take the grossest shit and try to market the fuck out of it. And it works every single time. Yeah. I'm uh I'm currently T V hunting. Mm -hmm. Um because I found out my uh the T V that I got <laughs> from uh Walmart, I bought like just the display T V and I thought it was four K and the guy like was telling me it was 4k and i bought it it was like super cheap because it was the wall display and then i get a, a ps4 pro finally and i'm playing uh last of us remastered and i'm like i'm like oh my god i wonder what 4k looks like and so i put in like um oh what other game did i get for like nothing like death stranding i put in and i'm like i'm like well this don't look right like this isn't this isn't blowing me away. Like what the hell is going on? So I look, and it's like, oh, you gotta like go to your PlayStation 4 settings to make sure that it's outputting at 4K. And then I go and I look in the settings and it has like the two 4K ones unavailable. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait a minute, something's fishy here. So I look up the model for my TV and it was 1080 the whole time. Damn. Yeah, I was like, I'm in a future proof. It's it's okay because I got the TV like super cheap because it was a floor model, but right. now I'm hunting for like a 4K TV and they're like, it's stupid. And then even it's, when it's even like when you, even when you get a 4K TV, you might even have to go into your TV settings and like make sure it's like doing the all putting the full shit and stuff. Yeah. Well, so like fucking. TVs go on sale so often. I got to link you to a group on Facebook where I found all my like clearance TVs and shit like that, that I'm sure you'll be able to find some 4K TV, but it's just like, what's going to be the next thing? Well, normally you can go and buy like the display model that's like on the wall. Yeah. Like that's what I did, but it was at Walmart and they do jank shit all the time. Fuck yes. I just walk up and I'm like, I'm like, I'll give you like whatever for this TV. And they're like, let me check. And they go back and they're like, can you do this? And I'm like, I'm like, I guess, you know, whatever. It's just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and so and then they're like, okay, we'll pack it up for you. Right. And then they find me the remote and shit. And um, yeah, and I'm there was the first time I ever did it, and now I'm not doing it again. <laughs> unless it's like 
unless it's like, like Best Buy. Like when I went to Best Buy to check what they had, they had like you know the display models. Like some of them were like removed, and I'm like, oh, people are coming in here just buying the displays and shit, display yeah. models. I'm like, I might need to do that for like an OLED or something, right? Which so. are stupid expensive. Right. But I'm hunting. I'm hunting for a 4K TV, and then when you add gaming to it, it's like there's just too much. There's too much shit for a fucking 4K TV, and it's like I'm just like learning about TVs now. And now I'm a fucking expert at them, <laughs> and I'm just trying to find like I was at Best Buy, and I'm like I'm sitting there for an hour just researching all the TVs, like all like. Do these have HDMI 2.1s because I want to future proof it? Do these have um what refresh rate do they have? Oh, yep. the PS4 Pro only outputs 60 Hertz, so I don't need to worry about 120 Hertz. But future proofing with HDMI 2.1, I might want that 120 Hertz. So I'm sitting there researching everything. And then they're like, and Best Buy people, of course, are like just fucking bothering me and trying to help me. And they're like, um, if you're between like these TVs, my boss says get this one. And it was like, it was it was one that I was looking at online that they said, you know, uh, get this one if you if you like if you can't get an OLED or like a Q90 Samsung or whatever, <laughs> like get this TCL um, S25 or whatever. And I'm like the Series Six. And I'm like I'm like okay, fine. I guess I'll, I'll get that one. And they're like, oh, we don't have any of those in store. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to order that and i'm like i'm gone I, i'm gonna yeah, see ya no see ya I'm, and they're like you don't want to order it and i'm like nope nope i'll be like don't tell me <laughs> to I, get a model of something and then it's not there i mean that's yeah, fucked up i'm already so in in indecisive on it and i'm like it's a, i mean it's a big purchase that i am okay with making but i ideally don't want to make it but i have like a shit ton of 4k games now that i paid like eight bucks a piece for so now, like, I want to play him in 4K because I got a 4K PS4. And it, it, she's just like, it'll take, like, two days. And I'm like, no, it won't. Do not <laughs> lie to me. I am leaving, like, because, I, I mean, it's just, like, Amazon two-day shipping right now for Prime, like, two weeks. Yeah. Well, be- well, well, Best Buy, if they're are they shipping it to your home or are they shipping it to the store? No, just to the store, probably. Oh, the store, they could do that pretty quick, actually. But Yeah, I, I, I don't trust it. Yeah, I was so I was so up on up in the air on it. So I went back and like I just I'm researching more now. Yeah, I'm like, is it OLED? Because I want a future proof too, and OLEDs are just like really future proof. But I'd be spending like fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm like, yeah. like I don't know if I need that. <laughs> so I'm just like more than. 400 on a tv i was gonna say i don't think i've ever spent more than five or six like maximum yeah I what tv do you have me no ross uh uh well the one that just got a new one didn't you well, that one that one, that's caleb's tv but yeah he only spent like i think five something i want to say yeah well 50, okay so 50, 55 inches like significantly cheaper but I was like, I was like looking at the sixty-five inch. Hmm. The thing is, if you Future buy one of those, if you buy one of those because of how big. Like a lot of times, the bases are the like where they have the two feet on the ends. Yeah, so you have to yep. buy like a you like pretty much have to buy like a thing to put on put it on too. Yeah, I'm I'm already thinking of that too, and it's bullshit. A lot of those are expensive too, unless you can find a cheap one. We but found yeah. a cheap one, luckily that was just barely big enough. I yeah, I'm I'm just building one. Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah. would, that would work. <laughs> Do two smaller ones and then just build a top to it or make a top to it. Yeah, I'm just going to do like what I do with all the tables now. Just get those metal legs, but I'm getting the short stubby ones. Mm-hmm. And then just get a flat board or whatever or a tabletop that you can just buy at the store now that I found yeah. out the hard way. And then just put that on there and then there. So it doesn't have shelves or anything, but it's a little fucking it works. Yeah, <laughs> functions. But yeah, I'm just like I'm shopping. I'm like, oh, like they had this LG, uh, you know, UHD TV, AI thin Q, 65 inch open box at Best Buy for like under 500. Mm. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds pretty cool. 
and then I just can't find anything online about it. And then it says it's and I'm like, do you have any like guarantees with this thing or anything like returns? And they're like, oh, no, it's uh, it's checked by Best Buy. <laughs> I'm like, so you plugged it in and just saw if it turned on the good old. And then you say good to go. And then mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. And then I'm like and then I'm on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and I'm like, oh, cool. TV's for cheap. And I'm like, oh, wait, you can't transport fucking TVs. Yeah. Like outside of a box, you like you can't do it. It would be like. It it would be so risky to like buy a TV from Craigslist and try to transport it without the box. Yep. You did. I guess if you had a truck and like stood it up with a sheet, it wouldn't be too bad. But I don't know. Got to pad around it, make sure it doesn't slide around in the bed. Like, yeah, it's fucking insane. Well, that that's what I've been up to this week. It's just researching 4K TVs. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, you spend $2,000 if you can't get this really cheap TCL one. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll get the TCL one. Yeah. What, they do watch uh, an internet video to come up with that? You know, TCL is made in China. I they're all made in China. Fuck yeah. Uh, it's the Series 6 uh, QLED. They're all they're all made in China, dude. Hate to break it to you. Right. And this is TCL's like QLED, so it's like on par with like the Samsung for like half the price. I was going to say, isn't much. Samsung like Japanese or something? Nah, it's all made in China, though. Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. Everything is pretty much. I mean, my well, my parents, like the one that we got for my parents is a 4K, and that's a TCL, and that's been doing pretty good. Nice. And then I have a Vizio that's been, eh, it's kind of up and down. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, brands don't really matter. It's all made by the same warehouse. Pretty much. In, uh, in China. So TCL just orders, like, because Samsung and Sony and LG and shit, they just, like, charge, like, an insane markup because of brand. And then TCL is just like, we'll take a hit. Or, like, our profit mar- margins will be, like, lower to get our name out there. And so they just order QLED panels. And this year they're doing, I think they're doing OLED panels now. They just order from the same factories that LG and shit does. But then they just, you know, put their name on it with a cheaper bezel or case and then just ship it. Like, yep. With less profit margins. It's all never, the same. Never mind. I'm an idiot. Samsung's like Korean or whatever. So is LG. Um, but TCL is a Chinese company, so they make the panels, I'm sure, in China and just make a few extra, just like the, the you know, the fake Jordans, the fake Yeezys or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, cause, you know, because China doesn't, they don't have, like, copyright protection or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, so they LG's do if you like, make us OLED panels, and China's like, we're going to make OLED panels. Well, they do if you file a copyright oh, in China, but look, most companies don't do that. Look at this. It says April 10th, 2020. It says Samsung ended its telephone mobile telephone production in China. Wow. Samsung? Yeah. Was it, of, is it just COVID or? I don't know. Uh, or is, they're not getting out of the phone biz, I'm sure. Probably nope. just using a different manufacturer. Who yeah. else is prop Apple up if they get out the phone business? <laughs> we'll do what? I said, who else is going to prop Apple up if Samsung gets out of the phone business? I mean, Motorola makes phones. Hmm. Yeah. Google makes phones now, too. Well, they know they pay other companies to make phones for them. Oh, yeah. oh. Look at this. Huawei other, makes phones. It says other manufacturers also shifted production from China due to the economic slowdown. It says Sony said it was closing its Beijing smartphone plant and would only make smartphones in Thailand. Hmm, interesting. Potato. Uh, Sony still makes phones. Yeah, I know, but it said yeah. they're mo- they're going to move their phone stuff to Thailand, is what I said. Well, yeah, Chris was asking what other brands there are, pretty much. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, I guess. Well, Sony Ericsson's still like 
one of the biggest brands. It's just not that like in the U.S. very much. I don't think. I was about to say it's been a long time since I've seen an Ericsson boy. But they're still like I think the other than like China, they're like the biggest phone thing for the rest of the world. I think. It's wow. not Nokia. Maybe I mean. Who knows? I haven't seen Nokia's in a long time. Indestructible Nokia phone. That's right. how they. Well, anyway, aside from uh, shopping, uh, Westside Gun tweets about Shady Records. Uh, he said uh, he wonders if they even know that they're nominated uh, at the BETs, and then people are worried about Grise- uh, Griselda's like career because uh, they're signed to Shady Records now, mm-hmm. and they're very and they're like they're promising. You know, so like people are worried that they they're signed to Shady, so they'll be mishandled. Griselda. So, so Griselda is that like a Norwegian death metal band or something? <laughs> I was gonna say, is that like the name of a witch from like Banjo Kazooie or some shit? <laughs> no, it's it's like they're they're like a, they're a hip hop group. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Crazy. And they've done stuff with other rappers and shit. Mm. What do you think about that, Bryce? What about people concerned about being uh, Griselda being um, mismanaged on Shady Records? Um, I I mean I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't that had that doesn't matter to me at all. I mean, they Eminem. We have. Go. Well, I know what you're getting at. Eminem doesn't manage anybody. He's an yeah, artist well, and just slaughterhouse. It's just a co. Like creator and owner of the label i mean i get he's that. not out there managing people so it's like it's not has nothing to do with him well i'm I'm not really getting at that i'm just saying like with all this covid shit going on like what the fuck are they supposed to be doing you can't have concerts that's how you showcase people because you put them up to open up for the big acts you can do instagram lives that doesn't generate any fucking money you can do tiktoks but fucking everybody's doing tiktoks right now. on fortnite we like, can't do, what, what are we the can't do tiktoks people? that's china huh you can't do tiktok that's china oh yeah follow directions people love that <laughs> <laughs> people love that's that shit. but yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, what the fuck are record labels supposed to do right now? Like, why are people worried about this right now? Like, that's dumb. Yeah. Yeah, like, everything... I I, I don't think they should be too worried about it right now, because it's... I mean... Everything's slowed down so much anyway. Yeah. But, I mean, they also... Artists have managers themselves, too. Yeah. And their managers are supposed to get shit done for the artist. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, management includes their management. It's not just yeah. the label. 100%. Oh, what it, when, when they're talking about being mismanaged by shady records or a record label, they've already signed a contract. Mm-hmm. So it's like, as, as long as they stay within their contract and the money keeps flowing, like, it doesn't matter what they do. They have their own individual management that will set shit up for them. Yeah. And maybe the label will help here and there. But, I mean, yeah, their management is their the label, management. The label's just literally like, here's your obligations, do them. Yeah. <laughs> the label, like, Pretty much. We want this many. Five albums, and that yep. is. Yeah. We, you get label. this much money, five albums, we get the proceeds or whatever in percentage of uh, percentage of earnings from whatever and whatever. And then the manager is supposed to set up the concerts and stuff. Yeah. And they're, the record label's like, we'll handle distribution, uh, just record it, give it to us. And they're like, oh, you could do better. Like, I get, I, they have a say in it for sure, but it's like. They choose the drop dates, they choose, you know. Yeah, their management needs to get shit done, too. Yeah, and it's, like, for people to throw that mismanagement shit around, like, even if, like, say, for example, I'm an artist right now, and I get signed to Shady Records, and they say I'm obligated to press five albums under their record label, and I go, dope. So since I'm doing this Rona self-quarantine shit, I'm going to bust out five albums, and I hand it to the, the record label. And even if they think that shit is super hot, like, 
they're not going to put that shit out. So, of course, it's going to look like, oh, what's that guy doing? Well, I did five albums. Well, we haven't heard anything. It's like, yeah, because it'd be no point in putting that much music out right now. What are you going to do? Like streams? Like record labels <laughs> are going to be able to do it with just streams. Like they need that merchandise and they need that uh, ticket sales. They need all of that shit. So I don't see how people are making that judgment off of time like this. Like that's stupid to me. Yeah. It's, yeah, well, I, I mean, we'll see. It's just like a, a really terrible time for an artist to do anything and to come up anyway. Yeah. Because they need to be out there. They need to be seen. They need to be social media, on social media. And, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff's not really happening right now. Right. So I fucking, I, when I went to Best Buy, dude, it was so fucking warm. It's so hot out. I actually, never mind. Never mind. I had my mask on, and that was like very warm air to breathe. Gonna say I have to work in that with a mask on or whatever. So that's fucking yeah. Shit. It sucks, dude. Ash, it sucks. At least we can breathe though. So that's yeah. like right. unlike the conservatives who apparently can't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. We're not a politics podcast, and it's a new hey, month. Hey, while, we're, while we're on the subject of politics, right, have you guys seen the the mayoral candidates for St. Cloud yet? No, we're not talking politics. Oh, no. What, what do I want to know? Is it St. Cloud Superman? Just, just, <laughs> just do me a favor. Outside of the show, look at WJON, and they did a highlight piece on each one of these people. It's bad. Spoiler. Is there like, is there like, uh, is, uh, is there not an incumbent or? Well, do there's one dude that I mean, obviously has been doing it for a while. There's one dude I saw that straight up had a Trump hat on his profile picture. Uh. <laughs> I know what that one is. Was that one of those fucking bar owners? Pr probably. Yeah, that's yeah. my thought. I'm gonna run for mayor. All somehow, right. I love how somehow, like all of a sudden, like bar owner has become like a highly respected, like, like kind of like a person to be, like in like at least where we live. Yeah, in that culture, I yeah, it is. Well, well, yeah, like everybody stands behind them, like you know, like all the time, like no uh, matter what, it seems like fifty people stand behind them. Oh God. 50, 50 racist people stand behind them. That's it. Right. And they're not actually standing behind the bar, they're standing behind the flag. Yeah. Right. And only that's the those are the the media only shows you those people. Just remember there's nothing everybody more, else is not supporting. There's them. nothing more patriotic than a, a bar in a place that sells handguns. So <laughs> <laughs> that's Minnesota. I'm like Is that a thing? Well, no, I'm just saying, like, never mind. <laughs> Do I have to explain what I mean? Nope. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, the thing is, is with this shit, you know, it's like, I get it. Eat where you want to eat. Do what you want to do. This, that, and the third. But, like, can we at least call a spade a spade? Like, people are, I can't believe that they would say this and this is hurting my business. I'm like, well, don't do it. Like, we're we're trying to make it impossible for you to be a racist and in business at the same time like we're accomplishing our goals if you're crying about it after you call people snowflakes for crying about real world issues then i don't, I don't know what to say to you that's true we're not a politics podcast ross bleep that <laughs> the whole, just one big like three minute bleep just right and we're back god dang it Oh, this is a good deal for a TV. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm just, I'm not, no, I'm just looking at TVs. It's all, oh, it sucks. How, how am I going to get one of you guys to set up my damn uh, Raspberry Pi? And uh, all, also, I need to uh, learn how to set up a Pi hole, apparently. Who told you that? Um, uh, a couple of friends of mine from back east. I mean, you could. I don't have mine anymore. Up. Does it actually? 
work? A pain like, in the ass. I mean, does it actually work? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, I need to set mine up again and have it work correctly. <laughs> it, mine required a lot of resetting, and there's a way to get it to reset, like, automatically you know, or something. It, yeah. Like, like restart at, like, 4 a.m. or something like that, and, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's super, it was super, it's super nice when it works, though. Mm. But it has to work. Yeah, that's why I'm like, eh. I'm going to do my, pi- I'm probably going to put uh, put it on a Pi 3. I have next week off. I might as well do that, I guess. Fucking working on the Pi Hole. Yeah. That sounds a lot more glamorous than it actually is. Yup. Yup. <laughs> So, does anybody have any other hip hop news that's been going on? There's not, you know, there's not much. No. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh. The P. I. I read the other day that the PS2 can now play burned games without a mod chip due to a DVD player exploit. Yeah, I heard something about that, but I was like, it's. I'm like, is PS2 relevant? Like, I was trying to it's, figure out what they meant by that. It's still in its infancy, but it's always relevant. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, it's just the hacking and mod community. Yeah. For, and like emulation community. Look what we can do. Because jailbreaking like a system is it, without physically modifying it is a huge deal. Oh. Like my Xboxes have mod chips, and that's how is, they're jailbroken. What's funny is, didn't they say like, uh, like I know like a lot of a bunch of Nintendo like source code leaked for like systems and stuff, but I think the Xbox stuff did for the original Xbox, Xbox Two, not that long ago. So I suppose people could do like actual like mod mods like in the software and stuff now. They could. I get, we'll see how it goes, but it, it's been like twenty years exactly for the PS2, and they're just just got it now. Like that's insane. So it's about twenty years for the Xbox too. So, and so I love maybe how it, we will see something. I soon love how it's that. like a DVD player exploit. So it's probably literally something like that isn't even like the fault of like the people who like coded for the system. It's just like the DVD no. player. It had it had something to do with like I think the code for like some some code that you can put into a ROM file yeah, that is burnt onto a CD that tricks it into thinking like tricks it into reading it as if it was a DVD, mm-hmm. but then it plays the game or something. I don't know. I didn't. I just you know watched a YouTube video on it, so I didn't delve deep. But <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Because that's like, like uh, Sega Dreamcast specific models and Sega Saturn. Like you could play burn games off those too. So it's just cool. Yep. It's cool uh, not buying PS2 games from third parties. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, did you guys hear about uh, the Harry Potter game? Open yeah. World? Yeah, I saw Coming in 2021. That. Wow. How excited are we, guys? <laughs> Better be able to play some damn Quidditch, man. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. It's GTA Five, but uh, Harry Potter, and then like you play Quidditch and shit. Oh man! Yep. Considering how like uh, like they're trying to cancel J.K. Rowling, See, we have like flyby wandings and shit. <laughs> are they? Uh, why are they trying to cancel J.K. Rowling's? What does she do now? Oh, she's she's like anti-trans or something. I want to say. Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. I haven't had the research to verify the claims, but it's possible. All right. Well, we're, uh, is, that, is that considered politics? No. If I don't 100% know it for sure, I'm going to say allegedly. Just I read something that yeah. said that, like, she had, like, some, like, like, a tweet to, like, Stephen King, like, where she was congratulating him about something. And apparently she, like, uh, hit or deleted the tweet, and they're all like, oh, well, Stephen King is, like, pro-trans like, like pro trans or something. I don't know. There was, like, some whole, like, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. 
Okay, yeah. well, I'm oh, I'm Googling it now. I don't know. I couldn't figure. I was, like, confused by it. Yeah. J.K. Rowling tweet. J.K. Rowling responds to trans tweets criticism. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, here we go. Like, even actors from, like, Harry Potter were coming out, like, against her, and I was like, oh, shit. Holy shit. I don't um, know. I don't know a ton about it, though. What's it, what you got, boys? So she apparently uh, just doesn't like them, I guess. And she made a comment about <laughs> Jeez. Yo, people oh, who oh, menstruate oh, or something. Guess, hmm. Yeah, maybe uh, they school have... renames Rowling House over trans tweet. Well, hmm. let's read show show the show the tweet. Maybe show she got rid of it. I don't know. The fucking tweet. Fucking somebody <laughs> had a screenshot of that shit somewhere. I'm I'm trying to just browse through these. Okay, she said. Uh, let's see if this is the correct one or real. Um, apparently here's a tweet of hers. Don't know if this is the one. I guess let me just read it first. Oh, here's what I was talking about. It says J.K. Rowling walks back praise for Stephen King after he denounces her anti-trans claims. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did he say? Damn. Says so she walked back praise for Stephen King after he denounced her anti-trans claims. It says. <laughs> She's like Stephen King. You're so great. He's like. She, re yeah, she retracted a tweet praising him. <laughs> that is fucking dumb. That's funny. Oh my what, god! Like, did you did you find did you find anything about what she said or anything? I don't know. It's 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 convoluted shit. Oh okay. <laughs> I like that the fact that anybody can get it both barrels about a tweet or a comment they made way earlier. Like Mark Wahlberg got it, I'm sure. Um. A lot yeah. of people catch it over comments that they said a long time ago, and it's like that. That's crazy. I'm here for that though. That's a lot of research. That's a lot of hours somebody spending in a basement, like researching shit. And I'm for. I'm all for that. Oh yeah, and for that game, I heard they said that she has like pretty much no input on the game. I think so. They were kind of trying to make sure people knew it was like she had like pretty much nothing to do with it. Nice. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I, I'm still trying to find the tweet. This might be <laughs> this might be it. She said, and I quote, if sex isn't real, there's no same sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. End yeah. quote. That's pretty transphobic. Is uh, I I don't even understand what I just read. Well, the thing is, it's like I can't interpret if, what I just read. There's if, too much. If, if too you're much. <laughs> if you're trans, that muddies the water too much for there to be a male condition and a female condition. And if females want to talk about how hard they had it, or males want to talk about how hard they had it because they're a gender trans people distract it too much for people to have that conversation i'm like fuck that shut up okay <laughs> okay weird yeah i'm like and then yeah. apparently stephen king said uh yes trans women are women and then she uh deleted her tweet praising him and unfollowed him <laughs> <laughs> that laugh was so okay cute. she still made she still made uh harry potter i guess uh, Daniel Radcliffe responded, um, okay. Like, <laughs> he just responded. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, no. I'm just saying, like, who cares? He, he, he just typed the words responded. <laughs> the boy who lived is speaking out. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. 
people are fucking bored. Like, this proves it that people are bored. And I'm fine with it. I'm all for it. Oh, is this the tweet? I don't know. What Maybe this is the tweet. What's it say? <laughs> Uh, it, it, she said, "People who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wumbin, Wimpund, Woomud. I is that it? Uh, Create, and then she posted a, a opinion article. Um, what are you saying, Alex? Instances where they're interpreting those words." As- you're kind of cutting out there, Alex. Because he's playing League and not paying attention. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that doesn't affect your microphone. Yeah, it does, dude. Latency. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are multiple instances where it just kind of... People finally were like, what the hell, man? What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Oh, she, okay. So apparently she's canceled, I guess, and no one cares about Harry Potter World. Open yeah, world game. Don't they have one more uh, Fantastic Beasts or whatever the hell they're called? Who? I don't know. Yeah, I I saw the first. I Does saw Johnny Depp get to be in that? Four, just the first one. There, I think there's already two. Holy shit! But there's supposed to be a third one. I want to say. We actually had to sneak to the movie to see the first one, my wife and I. That shit was funny. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we couldn't admit that we were going to the movie to see that shit. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think I, so, like, I like, saw the first one on TV. I think that's all. So, you know uh, how uh, Amber Heard beat uh, Johnny Depp? Yep. In their marriage, she yep. she apparently she also cut off like the tip of his finger, and like burnt him with cigarettes and shit. I guess what the fuck? Like that's <laughs> Johnny Depp. Like she hasn't she hasn't been arrested yet. Wow. But I th- I think she did. He he also lost a job from it. I guess because she said that he was doing it to her, but it turned out mm-hmm. it was the other way around. And I don't I don't think she's been jailed. Wow, he's a he's yeah. always been a very private person. So like, this is just crazy hearing this come from his corner of the world. Well, it's much more difficult for men to speak of abuse anyway because you're expected to just take it, right? That the whole you mean a man of your stature couldn't, you know? And it's like I get it, whatever. But it's like that's crazy to not. I mean. He notoriously was like not in the news doing anything, like almost like lived a super secluded life outside of movies. That's why I'm like, that's weird. He's well, the thing the thing is, I don't think he has. Um, because Johnny Depp uh owns a club that he frequents a lot. And I, I think it's a very popular club. So I I don't know I, he's out there get he's out there partying, but I guess like yeah his private life maybe yeah is that what you're talking about yep although it all spilled out now we know what's really going on right and just getting yeah that's fucking terrible yeah and he has a band I think really yeah I know he's done yeah. music before I know that yep I seen I, I saw where they had him like performing with other people and stuff. 30 seconds to Mars. What the hell? I was like, yo, I don't know. I don't, I was, I don't think it was that. (laughs) Uh, you cut out that music sound like. Oh, okay. Now you're back. And we're back. How's League of Legends going? He just like doesn't even want to answer you because he's mad. (laughs) Yeah, uh, so the Westworld showrunners are creating a Fallout show. How do on Amazon? How do we feel about that? First off, fuck Amazon. All right, how do we feel about that? Did anybody here watch fucking Westworld aside from me? Nope. I watched the nineteen seventy something movie. So 
Okay, well, the show, the HBO show. No. I figured they would have tried to release uh, Skyrim on Amazon. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll make a show. (laughs) Successful enough, they might. So, um, yeah. So that's a a thing. Kind of wonder what the heck they're going to focus on. Oh, it's going to be stupid. I have I like I am not excited for that at all. Oh, but what if they do Fallout New Vegas? I was gonna say if it has Mr. House involved, it'll be great, probably. Yeah, and Benny. And then Matthew <laughs> Matthew Perry can play Benny. God damn. In live action. That'd be that'd be awesome. He because he voices it. The guy from uh Chandler from Friends uh voices Benny in uh fucking Fallout New Vegas. Mm. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Fallout New Vegas is like the best Fallout. So that would be cool. That's the only Fallout that I played. Really? Yep. It's a good one to play. Mm-hmm. Worth. Um, Westworld, I couldn't even finish the second season. But it was a really good show. I know I was told that the, by someone who watched it that the second season was definitely like a downgrade. Yeah, and the sad thing is it had, like, a lot of Ed Harris. Oh, yeah. And it's and it's like, uh-oh. I heard they were doing a third season. Like, well, I think, it's, I think it's because the story... Um, First, and I know it's, it's, it's hard. Said... It's hard to describe, but it, the pacing for the second season is pretty garbage. I know when I told the person that I know that watched the first season that there was going to be a second season, he was like, really? He's like, he's like, they didn't even really set it up for a second season. He thought. But I guess, I guess. Yeah, I guess they it's... definitely did. If the first season's popular enough, they're going to try to milk more money out of it. Yeah, your friend's wrong. Definitely set it up. Well, like how? Like how? Up, they're going to try to milk <laughs> more money out of it. Well, people can watch Westworld to find out if they want to. I don't want to. Like what he what he explained to me seems like they could have just stopped it. It's like imagine, if you will, for a second. There's a logical conclusion to the Star Wars uh, trilogy, and then magically they make movies. That's true. Nine. You know. Yep. Because it those are because it's the aftermath. Like you always have all these good movies. Yeah, but aftermath shit isn't like that's why it's not as good because like most aftermath shit isn't as good. Yeah, but I mean it's a side that you never see to pretty much any story. That's that's like when you know they're like milking it, like when they start doing the aftermath stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but they're also trying to weave new stories into it as they go, mm-hmm. and they they have a world that they created in the show that isn't fully explained in season one. So they're able to also focus on that in season two, along with everything going on. So it's kind of like a past present thing, kind of like the Witcher did. Mm. It's like kind of like past and present side by side, but then they give you the trickies. (laughs) But that's it. That's season one that they tell you the trickies in season one. And then season (laughs) two, they elaborate on the past pretty much a little bit more. And then it deals with the aftermath of what happened in the park. And then it adds new parks. Yeah, I heard about that. New stories. It's, um, I don't know, it's a good show. It's just the pacing for second season was shit, and I couldn't even finish it because... Was the pacing as bad as Umbrella Academy's pacing? Um, Umbrella Academy, aside from being trash itself, um, it, like it couldn't hold the interest to where like like I couldn't even finish it. I like yeah. That. You what liked it? Yeah. I Are like they making that. a second season? Uh, yeah. yeah, I believe so. Oh my god. Yeah. It it started getting good, but then I stopped watching it. Like, cause it once like the time travel shit was in there, and there was a few, you know, episodes well, to, after it got that. To the point where I was like, do I actually want to see what the resolution is? And I was like, you know what? Nah, I don't really feel like I need to try. Like, I'll watch it maybe someday. One of those things. Yeah, I yeah. St- I stopped watching it too. I, like at that point, like I'm like, oh, this is where they went with it. Do I care? 
no, it's too late. You've, <laughs> you've, you've, you've Dude, bored I, me before I got to the end. I think I was like in between shows as I was watching it. So that might explain why I like it. Cause I was just kind of looking for something to watch filler. Yeah. Yeah. I almost feel like felt like uh what's her name? The main chick in it. Uh, Va- Ellen yeah, Page. Yeah, I almost felt like her acting was kind of like not that great in it either, which I guess was kind of weird. I also guessed um, Ellen Page's like arc. Yeah, I kind of figured that happened. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that much of it to where I know she's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is definitely gonna. This is it. And that then, was like the only was, thing like, oh, I could yeah. see happening. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, Umbrella Academy is a Dark Horse uh, comics show on Netflix. Written by Gerard Way of uh, yeah. My Chemical Romance. Yes, it's an emo show. Pretty much. Yeah, there's a lot of it in there. A lot of emo. Yeah. <laughs> um, What else are they coming out with? Uh, Let's see here. Movie theaters are still slowly trying to creep shit in with old releases. Yeah. Um, people aren't biting, which is good. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's oh, just okay. No politics. No, even though it's not politics, <laughs> people think it's politics. Yeah. Coronavirus <laughs> is not politics. It is science, and it is fact, and it is happening. But it's political, so you can't talk about it. China. <laughs> yeah. But that's all I got. Uh some off I mean George R. R. Martin said he's been stuck at home during quarantine working steadily on Winds of Winter and he says it will be coming out next year. And so uh, that's a game that's a Song of Ice and Fire, the book series that Game of Thrones is based off of and finished. So he's got two books left, and this is the uh, one of the final two. So, if like cr- coronavirus didn't happen, how many years do you think it would have been before it came out? <laughs> I'm just um, kidding. I don't know. <laughs> he asks. I mean, for those of you who are interested in the Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, uh, you can watch uh, a really good thing on youtube that i found it's george r R. martin and stephen king interviewing each other and it's incredible it's incredible because they're both like really big fans of each other and like you know stephen king's like i really fucking love your books like song ice of fire and george r R. martin's like how the fuck do you write so fast and like stephen king's like i well aside i'm sure in the 80s it was just cocaine but he's like, I just sit down and I do one page a day, like a minimum. Mm. And then some days, like, I will fight it until I get that one page out a day. So steadily, he's slowly going. And then when he hits a big spout, he can, like, you know, do more than one page a day. But he tries to write at minimum one page a day. But his books are a lot smaller than George's. So one page a day is two years. <laughs> you know, for George R. R. Martin. I was going to say, it's like writing an encyclopedia or something. Yeah, and I'm sure the book is, like, done, but it's just editing and proofreading and editing and editing and uh, I wonder if consistency. He, do you think he writes everything in, like, an order, or do you think he just writes each plot that's going to be in the book and just kind of assembles it? Well, he ha- he has he said before that he has the main outline... Oh, okay. But then he writes his characters as from their well, it's um. But I wonder if he does the even with the outline. I wonder if he does it in like order from the beginning of the outline, or if he just chooses different parts to do at a time. You know what it, I'm saying? It depends. I'm sure he just tries to like, oh, I haven't wrote with this person in a while. I'll write with them, or their story is slowing down, so I can like skip over to these characters it's all done in pov chapters so first person and he writes as that person so the decisions that they make Mm. to get towards the final you know his major plot points is outline 
So he write it's like pretty much when he's writing a Tyrion chapter, he's like, what would Tyrion do? So it's like, oh, if he's writing as a crazy person, he'd he'd like write like a crazy person would think kind of thing. I I don't know. I'm sure there's an interview out there that I've watched where he talks more in depth about it, but it's such a complicated series. It's the biggest world building that I've seen or that I've read. Like from one individual person, because like I read Warhammer 40k and I read like Forgotten Realms, but Warhammer 40k is a hundred authors writing individual stories within a universe, and Forgotten Realms. Well, I I read Dritz. Um, that's one guy with a very long story, but in smaller chunks. But then there's also other people writing in the that setting, that universe, and there's you know dozens of authors writing stories in that universe as yep. well. But George R. R. Martin, he's the only one writing within his universe, and he's still creating it, mm. and he's so. taking it upon himself to do all the fucking shit in it. So what if what if you volunteered like, to write? It's write crazy. In, what if you volunteered to write in his universe? Would he let you? No, probably not. Okay. Um, I mean, he let D and D try to, and look what they did. Oh, I get it. The showrunner guys, or whatever. Yeah, because he he didn't he didn't want the show to be made or the movie. Because originally he said they came to him and they wanted to do a movie from just Jon Snow's perspective, and he's like, "No, what are you talking about? That'd be fucking dumb. Like the books are way more complicated than that." And and then he's like, he got like show offers and he's like, no. But then HBO came and he said the money was just too much to pass like up. Like he'd be stupid to not let them do it for how much money they were giving him. So that's how the show came about. And he he tested the show runners, the D&D, David and Dan or whatever. He tested them at a dinner. To see if they were actually fans of the books, um, which was, you know, who is who is Jon Snow's parents, and that wasn't still not specifically said in the books, but it's hinted at. Like you could put, you can string it together, and they guess cor- correctly, and he's like, oh, okay, then I guess I'll let you do it. Well, what but. if what if they would have just like said something that he didn't even think of? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, well, it's 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 hard to explain, but there's like, uh, there's obvious picks. Yeah, yeah. Like he, like in the books, through like rumors or whatever from other POV characters, it's like rumors of who the parents were or the mother at least, because people think it, it's Ned, Ned Stark, and cheated on. <laughs> his wife at war and birthed Jon Snow. But then there's rumors are like, oh yeah, this is who the mother was. Mm-hmm. So it's like deliberately trying to misdirect you into yep. believing that it's still Ned and some other random chick's kid. Yep. Um, we know that's not the truth now, but for those of you who haven't watched, watch. And those of you who haven't read, read. It's it's insane. But I, I can't wait. But I can I can't imagine editing one of those books and getting it consistent with like how many stories. Like he lets the stories branch off, but he doesn't end them. Yeah. So like he'll continue to grow and branch off this story and into a tr- you know this huge tree and to the point just... where he's taking ten years to write a fucking book. Because it's it could, so complicated. And it could just randomly come back later to that storyline, probably, I'm guessing. Like, if yeah. it isn't complete over yeah. time and stuff. And and sometimes and sometimes it's like, I I can't, I, I have to reread the books, but I'm trying to think if any story is, like, pewter out. Yeah, like, characters can go their separate ways and you won't hear from a character again, because they're not a POV. Yep. So it's only a select... All the stories are told from first person perspectives mm-hmm. of individual characters that are chosen. POV and best. it's it's awesome. It's incredible. 
But yeah, that's uh, that's the news about George R. R. Martin. He said it might actually come out next year, and I'm sure it's been done for a year. But they're just like fixing it to make sure oh, everything's he correct. He did world building for that one video game with the Dark Souls guy, didn't he, or something like that? I'm sure, that took some of his time. He did. Oh, oh, the there? game that he was writing for. Yeah. Oh yeah, which game was that? Yeah, he was part of the world. Wasn't it like Elden Ring or something like that? Was it for Konami or something? I don't remember, but I, he was he did world building with the one guy for it, so Yeah, that that probably took up some of his time. He also doesn't like like I don't even think that like a song of ice and fire is his favorite of his books. Like I'm sure he would rather be writing a different book, but he's like obligated to finish the story pretty much. Mm-hmm. Says it was originally supposed to come out in June 2020, but I, I'm guessing it got switched. I'm just gonna guess. The which? That Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. Is that the name of the game? E L D E N R I N G. Bandai Namco. Yeah. Says, oh, there's gonna be a showcase on July 22nd, a Bandai Namco one. Wonder if it'll be at that. It could be. Let me see. It's it says writer is not George R. R. Martin. Oh, let me see here. I'm no I'm pretty sure like he worked on it. Oh, it is a collaborative effort between the director and fantasy novelist George R. R. Martin. I wonder what I wonder what it's about. What if it's like there's trailers out that from like each said, year. Yeah, it says it's an upcoming dark fantasy action role playing game. Yep, best the guy, other guy, that Miyazaki guy is best known for creating the Souls series. Yep, so like the Dark Souls. Yeah, and... dude, like fucking Howl's Moving Castle, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Yep, with world building by fantasy novelist George R. R. Martin. Cool. Oh, I'll probably I'll probably check that out. Now that I got a PlayStation. <laughs> um do you guys want to talk about any of the other stuff or is yeah, that it? That's up to you guys. Anybody got anything else, Chris? I do not. Alright, are we calling it? Is that it? Yeah, sure. Alright, we'll catch you next time. Play. See you. See you. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the episode. You can catch us currently at the Prime 4 Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Podcast Addict for audio only. If you want to see how fugly we look in real life, you can also catch us on YouTube under the Prime 4 Podcast.